たらそう、
you know, I never, you know, I never had any conflict with somebody. But it, it was just two couple people in there that just, but you always got that one person that just got to ride you. They got to get on your last nerve. And even though it, I didn't cause them to come at me, you, you know, other than I made a kind of slight mistakes, but it was nothing that was detrimental on the job that it, it was, I put any people, myself or anybody in danger. But it's the way when you have, when, 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 it's, it's hard being the black man on the job. I'm just going to tell, I'm just going to be real with you. And if you got some people, when you don't, if you don't want only black people or any other people, they come at you hard. And there's been a lot of cases. There, I have seen, I heard a case where some black men in California, this discrimination was so bad that they mentally, when it's, it, it really destroyed them mentally. It really did. This is something that has got to be addressed. And unfortunately, I'm glad that they didn't do what he did, what this guy did. You know, what he did was just crazy. If you know, if he did do this, but they, but they got some recording on him. This guy right here. You know. I would never say, no matter what your opinion is about an individual person, basically on on the color of their skin, you never take it out on someone else because that's just not not it. And if anything, and this is what I've learned, because I've I've been I've been totally disrespected as a person and as a man, and just happen to be a black man. The best thing I you to do is just get up and walk away and just quit and when you feel that you get that type of angry to the point that you think about doing something out of out of character like he did it's time to get up and move ain't ain't that much anger in the world to cost you your freedom and cause other people's freedom or to cause someone their life excuse me mm, cause their life there's no nothing worth that, and that's why I left the job. And they tried to call me back, but I said no. I said you know once you disrespect me like that, talk to me like I was just. And here I've been training on the job for six seven months, so I knew what the job was. And what really got me was it's like at the time they were doing some construction work up there, and I've been coming when, when I get done with you know the drop off, I come straight back. You know, I stopped and get some meat first because I thought they were a little lean on that. And I would never, you know, stop at a restaurant and eat inside. Or I, would, I would never use the gas company card for to get gas. And, and I would put nothing on it but the company gas and whatever is related to company policy. So, and I always got along with people no matter what. There's times I had to wait on something. They asked me to wait, I wait. I don't have no problem with doing something like that. But what really got to me, and I'm just telling from my, but when he said to me, you, and, and another thing, you know, why are you taking so long? And that just, that made me angry. Cause here, here you have trained me on the same couple, the same route. And you and you had to talk to me that way, and, and you know what I did? I didn't I didn't get mad. I, I, I said you know what, and I told that the day the next day I told his a day, a day manager. I'm, this this is my last week. I'm not coming back. And you know what I did? I took my jacket, folded, took my badge, put the keys, put them, and le and left. And they and they were sh and and you see you tell them that you know you go find your your perfect employee, go find your perfect person. And I never turned back. And I said black and you know if you anybody, but particularly I'm dressing this to black men or black women. Don't if someone get that if they disrespect you like that, and you feel that kind of anger, leave. Leave the job. 
there's nothing worth it. And you can always get get, get a job or save enough money and go on your own and do self and just self contract self employee. That's the best thing to do. You ain't got take if you if you got at got go through it leave. If you got and go get some and if you get that anger go talk to someone and go get some mental health. You know, thank God that I have, you know, I have a spiritual, you know, in the, you know, friends around me that keep me balanced. But that 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 can make anybody angry and set somebody off the way that man, you know, he, he kind of totally disrespected me as a as a, as a person. You know, you know, we had to train you over again. It was why, and, and on top of that, why are you taking so long? Now, mind you, I'm driving through traffic, and I'm trying to go as fastly, accurately, conveniently as I can without getting in no accidents, without getting no tickets, making sure I get there on time. And, and when I would come back to the office, you know, you know, it's not like you, you know, like you come back and get a delivery and you, you, you know, you, you got a delivery waiting on you, then you go back out most of the times because there were other drivers. So I would have to come back and wait for for thirty to forty minutes before they send another batch of medication out to the hospitals. So I would have to wait sometimes two or three hours because it, because it, whatever driver was coming in during that hour, half hour to an hour, if you like, if the driver coming in to work time, then they give him the going out. They send him out, and he's coming in, clocking in, then he goes out, and that's how the way it was working. But I want to stress stress this. You, and if you feel like you get to that point that someone disrespect you on in, in the company, and they make you that angry, leave. The, if you feel like you feel like you at that tipping point. Leave it. Leave that job. You ain't. Some jobs ain't worth fighting. You you know we. We, you know, as black people, we ain't got to deal with that. We ain't got to deal with that mindset. And you make your own money. And you be your own boss. Or find a partner to be boss with you. And it, that's, one, that's one thing. But, and I'm not excusing because you're going to come across people, even if you do go in business, some people get nasty at you. But at least, you, you, you your own person. They, you can tell them to go take a take a hike somewhere, but you don't ever want to get to the point to get get violent. And um, if you had to take some days off, and if you if you save up enough money, go vacation, go out to go out of the state, go to a park, go to a, uh, if you got enough money, go maybe go to the islands or something like that. Maybe stay for a couple of days and save up and go for a week or something. But don't let it to the point mental, you know, mentally, because I, I know, because there's a couple times everybody has their breaking point when someone you somehow about to make you snap, and it, you, and that's but that's not the answer. That is not the answer is to harm somebody or think about harming somebody because this one individual offended you in some type of way just because whatever their skin tone is and this is if you're African American if you're black or if you're any other nationality but don't this this ain't it and this this, this is not it and if you ever if you ever get that type of anger and this is just a message I think that black men and black women who, who suffer, and this come, and there's been psychiatrists that have proven this that it, it comes from genetically from our our ancestral ancestral way. You know, so it, sometimes it can run in the family, and 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 it, it could be something with that. But I do believe it, that could be the case with this man. And so, 
and you just never know when anybody can be a ticking time bomb. But hey, you know, this would be a message. I want to title this um for anybody and whatever you do. Don't threaten nobody, don't harm nobody. Even some things that I, I've learned to say, but I always be balanced in what I say. And I never want to harm nobody. Never, never think about harming another person. You know, if anything, I feel like I need to just get away from you. <laughs> just get away and just get away. Just get away. And since I, I haven't been back to a, a job, it's been much of a mental relief. Sometimes it may take six months to take a year. That's why some people have left in unemployment. Remember during the panic, during, and that's gotta be a lot of pressure. But part of the pressure was not only you know, making sure that you get, don't get COVID and you have to get the other thing to make, prevent that you from, from getting COVID, but a lot of the times that there were people probably ready to leave anyway because they felt unappreciated. They probably wouldn't get paid. Some some places, uh, some places where they, uh, like in like I've been through, they talk down on you, or you can go. You might be discriminated when you get on a job for whatever reason it is. They, they take a personal dig at you. And they're trying to find some way to just and so it's nothing worth losing your mind over and losing your peace and losing your mind ain't no group of people on this planet no individual or group of people will make me want to do that to anybody and you know it by him being from what i've seen about his background if he felt that way um, about different groups of people, that would have been an easier option. Just leave the country, just leave the country, and go. You know, go maybe go to Africa to to the Caribbean and get your mind healed up. You know, if you could put his money to a side, and that's what I was suggesting. Because one thing I was looking at, and this one I watched this one guy. Named Phil Scott, and uh, on, he's on the African News Channel. And one of the thing, and I like what he said that sometimes America be, can be very stressful. So his solution is, hey, you know, hey, that's why we we urge you to to, to put your funds together and, and just go on the vacation. I've been out of the country, but it's like wow. But you you'd be surprised to hear other black if you if anybody particularly for anybody is African for black people is that the, the, the escape the mental part of racism. Sometimes it may maybe just if you can put your coins together, because for what I it goes someplace maybe not every place is gonna be perfect, but pick a place that. You can be solid to and have a peace of mind that don't make you push you to the point where you want to be enraged with anger that turns into a thought of harming somebody or harming yourself. And this is the most wisest thing. There's no, and you know, what if his political views, you know, what he, they, they said his, how he felt about different white people, Asian people, and other people. And that, you know, he, and he's, he was a person that was proud to be straight, you know, black, hardcore, nationalist. But if that's the case, then go to then go around and be around an area where it's mostly black. There's, there's different nations that have black islands and black countries. If that's just how you strongly feel, and that's why, let's keep a peace of mind. If you feel you get to that point, but don't take it out on some individuals. We had nothing to do with maybe that person, that one individuals, 
that made the made they were racist towards you. And I as a black man in this country, I know what that's like. I know how they way they they don't think too highly of us. And then how they the way they think that this comes from traditionally. That they feel like when they, you work for them, they feel like they can belittle you. And they feel like I mean other people go through it too, but they particularly black men and women, they particularly you get and once in a while you get an individual like that. Get some individuals. And I'm saying that's why one of the reasons why I don't I don't you know, to me when I a couple of times I, I went back recently and applied for a couple of jobs but and I knew that there was a couple of companies I knew they were gonna call me because um they give you the book run around, you know, they say some of them, you know, the big old they you know they need you know they need somebody but you know they they really want somebody white i mean i i, I knew it i get i just you know i, I knew it's like if you're some some small companies you you go you know it's like they, they want a particular person but they but they they're kind to you and they appreciate you and everything but i i, I knew and i said and, and really i don't feel offended it's a blessing because what if you get you get in a company and they start and you get some racist co co-workers start talking to you like a dog. So, and it could be an, it could be another situation, and I'm you know so, and sometimes people don't understand that well, that can break you down. That can that that can, and as a people, that that has it his own um, tip to the edge. That people actually start to act out because another and really when you beyond that kind of anger to the point there's a spirit that comes in that says gives you an idea to, to harm somebody. It's time to go and get some help and get deliverance. I can't str stress that. And so. Um, my heart goes out to the victims, definitely goes out to the victims, you know, of that. But, um, because they had nothing to do with his wrath. Why did he do that to those innocent victims? Who, it was, it's not, it's not right to terrorize people who had, because of something you're angry about against whatever you had encountered with at your job, or some particular person. Why well, take it out on some innocent people who had nothing to do with it? You know, that's how I feel about it. And is the consequences that he brought on himself. If it's, if it's for some reason, it's come the fact that because right now it's, it's not looking too good. But if anybody that would watch this video, um, that's, that's the best thing to do. That, and you can tell something with this in this man's eyes, with the one with the hat. You, you can tell something isn't there. Something is not there. But mentally, emotionally, but no, I don't ever feel like that. Hey, you know, there's times I vent, but you have to be wise of what you vent on too. Um, but no, it's it's not worth it. Not, nothing's worth you losing your mind because you. It's not the worth taking your life or taking someone else's life. It's not worth it. There's always another option. And, you know, I don't know what went wrong in this life to make you feel that way. Because sometimes when people are going through something, and like, what went on in his life that make him build up to that point? And it could be anybody. You don't necessarily be him, maybe anybody, even people that have done stuff before. 
whether it was a mass shooter or whatever, you know, I don't, or, I, you know, what went through their mind, what, why is this so much anger, you know, but only God knows, but nobody, nothing is worth it. And because there's always a solution. The solution is to get out. If you're in a relationship with somebody, get out. If you're on a job with somebody, get away. Just get away. If you feel like you're to the point that, you know, there's, there's a way out. Some people do it every day. Some people do. Some people, I've heard a case like this that some people that they've been pressured by their family. And just in life in general, and that's why some people, they there's some why. A friend of mine has told me this that that's why some people end up homeless. And I'm like, wow, you know. She said they couldn't deal with life. My friend, my friend Pauline told me this that she met someone one time that this man, he had great means, but something to the point that he he can he could go back home be with his family, but. Whatever drove him to the point he'd rather be homeless out in the street. And I'm like, wow. That but there's some people in this world that can in that when it comes to some things in life that can push you to that point. And like and like I mentioned, it's just that hey, but it's never worth I were to step away and hold my dignity and let something weigh on my conscience to pull me down to something that dwell with a rage and anger that will take try to take your mind and go harm somebody. It ain't worth it. It's not worth it. And I was when I think about that job, <laughs> I was like, wow. And they contacted me recently, Tom. Like, hey, can you come back and do a route for us? No. Because every time you know, I got to come back, I got to be reminded how to wait. And, that's, and, it was, and it was not only that situation on that particular job. It was a man that I was, you know, basically doing my part on the job. Just doing as fast as accurately. But he just had to stand over, stand over me. He, and it was another young man and that we would take these things, uh, caps, and we would drop in the needles in this nuclear thing. And I, I'm doing it fast because I'm standing at a certain distance. And you understand that far. I'm like, no, I, I mean, we work with low radiation. I'm I'm going as fast as I can and going doing it with his hands. And, Why are you doing it? Why are you doing that way? You should just try to think, think I should go this way. And it's like, dude. You got enough stuff. Why are you watching what I'm doing? You know, he had you know had to fill out the bags and everything. Why are you too busy all up in my business? That was another thing that kind of got on my nerves at the job. It's like I'm I'm sitting there. I'm working at a good pace, at a certain pace, and then someone come come over, trying to get you out your pace, and they see that you're kind of newer on the job. You know, you already. And it's, I'm about three or four months into the job. Not like I'm like 10, 20 days, about 10 days into the job. But, you know, I'm trying to move as fast as I can. Because, you know, it's always those few, first few months. People, they kind of watching you. And, but it's like, they are making sure you do everything right. And I kind of respect that. I kind of understand. But it's, it was just, um, um, um. It, it just got on my nerves, and that's one. That was that was the tipping. That's one. That was one of the tipping points. Like, okay, it's time to go. It's time. Here, here, here's your stuff. I'm gone. You know, I'm gone. And they had enough time. To, at that point, I don't care. You know, when you, once you once you do that to me, I'm gone. I'm not gonna sit there. And let some, some come back and art go back and forth, go back and forth. No. And I learned that in past times. If you're not comfortable in the environment, leave it. 
and I've been at a job like that once before. I had a job that I was picking up passengers at the airport, and this this I'm one this one guy at the airport. You know, I've been parking at a certain time and parking. Talk, he just come one day. I kind of was just kind of that's okay, you know. And he, the way he talked to me, like, hey, look at me when I'm talking to you. And, I, and this was like a parking guard or whatever. And I'm like, you know, and I got a game that look, and that kind of set me off. And then one time the person I was working for, it, you know, she asked me to go do, get something for the van. So I said, okay, you know, I'm going to get it, get it off the job. She mad because I didn't get back to her to a certain time, and she called herself going off on me and sending me a text. And so, and I mean the way she talked to me in that text was like, "I, I, I boy, I tell you, <laughs> ooh, I, I, I mean she and she supposed to be my manager, my boss, and it took everything in my power not me to cuss that woman out." What she wrote in that text to me. It took everything in my power. I'm telling you. But don't ever let someone get to you that way. If you get that mistreated and you feel yourself, whether you're a month or two or three months to six months to a year, it is not like it's a job that's a career job. You know what I'm saying? It's not like no job making some benefits. You know, it's just, you know, my, my old man would say a job was a dime a dozen, you know. It might take you a while to get the next job, but it's a dime a dozen. And you have one life to live. And don't let, because stress can cause one thing. Not only can cause your blood pressure to go up, being angry, it causes all other, mentally, can take, then when you, when you mentally get to you up here, then fit, it affects you physically. And A, if you, if you add a company, you add a job, just, just hey, leave it. Just say, hey, I think I'm going to find some place else to work. You know, find some place where I can get some, some respect. I'm, you know, I'm to the point, I'm at an age, you know, he, he's like six, six, seven years older than me. I'm at a point in time. See, when I was younger, I would tolerate, but when you get older, you don't tolerate stuff that, like that no more. You know, because I, I don't need you. I don't need a job. I'll find, I, I can find a way of making money without going through the favoritism, the nepotism, the racism, and, and all that pressure, the stuff, and that, that hidden favoritism. And You ain't got to deal with all that. You don't got to deal with it to the point that it's mentally taking you down. You ain't got you ain't got to deal with that. Ain't nothing to the point that it makes you want to act out and want to harm somebody. Or you see somebody look similar to the people that 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 you had a conflict with at your job or um and at the time when I was working at other job, I had I had this was I was really getting to the point it was a breaking point. Where my last apartment complex uh, and this and it, I made a video about this, how I was, I'm a kind of person, I was a good tenant. I never had anybody around me, never got into any quarrels, altercations with tenants, never threatened nobody, never, never harmed nobody, never thought about harming myself. Always buy by the rules for where I live at. Never brought any crazy characters and kooky people over my place and, and that caused disrespect, that caused conflict with my neighbors. I've always been a respectful person. But this but it seemed like when you when you when you don't do that, when you're the kind of person that keep to yourself, I was the kind of person I keep to myself, I'm friendly to people. I'm friendly I'm neighborly to people. You know? And even Times when they kind of, but it, it they, but became a little bit too overbearing. This one partner complex, and I mentioned this in the video. Um, you know, and of course, you know when you when you go by poor to your income, you, they come. I, I can understand inspections. I can understand they got to spray. They got to check the filters. They got to 
but they got to the point that being nitpicky on how the way your car was parked out there. Then they always go, and then when it comes to re, re, re-sign the papers to sign the lease, if you don't sign, if we don't hear about you from a certain time, so you make an appointment. You go over to the apartment com- complex and and go go sign with the people. This would would have made me angry. Then they they wouldn't even be there. You know, the manager or whoever's supposed to be helping you sign the paperwork, they don't even respect you enough enough to know that they called it off. And that was one of the things. Then. You know, I try to keep my upkeep of my apartments. You know, I'm not I'm not the most fan. I'm not one of these super clean, but I keep it good enough that I don't keep, I don't hoard hoard stuff all over my apartment or leave food out and, and you know garbage all over and stuff like that and make it seem like it's inhabitable. Um, but they just, you know, one time I was going through the apartment and I don't know, I missed, you know, when they, I, they, um, they would do like, if you missed a smudge and you didn't wipe, completely wipe out your, let's say the oven or something like that, they'd be threatening to kick you out. I mean, it would be, or if you don't get this done, then you have to come back over to make sure everything is up to par or whatever. That's one of the things. And it, it was like, it was overbearing. Then, like the way you park your car, it, you got to park it forward. Um, and then, if you, and then when you get it, if you get if you decide to get another car, and you have to take it up to the office, you you got to have they got to be it got to be registered, and what what their office, and it, even if it, if it's just sitting there my the time, they have somebody ride around one of the maintenance people, and put stickers on on the car and threaten to have it told if it's if it's not belonging here. I'm like, dang. Now I can see, and now here is that the car got license and sticker. It's not like it's a car, you know, you see you go to a property and it's an abandoned car with no license, no no sticker. It's been parked there for a certain amount of time. And it's my ve- it's my vehicle. I'm was eventually but they but if you didn't apply for it at a certain time, this is how ridiculous this apartment was. It was some things I understand as far as apartments, you know, because I've been around people that own buildings and stuff. But some things, they were, it didn't feel like it felt like a prison. It really did. It didn't feel like how where I live at now. It felt like a prison. I didn't have no peace, and I had neighbors. Now on top of that, you know, this this is getting on you. This is really getting to me. And it's like I was really mentally I'm about ready to crack because I got you got you got three or four na- neighbors around you, and they you know they have a company over they being honorary, disrespectful, loud, you know come one coming to people they up under you, then you got someone breaking in your car you go out the next morning, and it was like I'm going through all this stuff at one time, and then it's just that. You know, if I one time I didn't, I, I, I was a few dollars short on the rent, and they practically threatened to put me out. I said, "Wait, I, I pay my rent." Oh, okay. They threatened to put me out over a few dollars. I mean, it was just crazy. Some way over the top, unnecessary things, to the point it just felt like I didn't feel like it was a home no more. And and. And I'm trying to tell the, the people who, like, sometimes the, the people that ask you, how are your health or how this, how this is going? I say, my health is fine, but, and they say, do you have any problem? Yeah, I'm, you've been depressed. Yeah, I've been depressed and down because I'm, I'm living out here. And, that's, and I try to tell them, they say, well, you know, well, Mr. Summers and blah, 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 you know, kind of run around. Stuff. But it's like, hey, but it, a lot of it deals with the environment. Sometimes that plays it. The plays a part too. Oh, because sometimes if you live around a stressful environment where there's shootings and and arguments and stuff like that, and people be coming in ripper roaring, and that that can get that can get to your nerves, or you have something problem with your apartment, 
in, or your place if you're renting somewhere and they you, you got a scum landlord or just a shitty or the shitty manager like I did up there that 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 can get to you that can mentally get to you then then I have to go to go to a job and deal with that bull bull crap when I was working at for this airport and I wasn't making any money uh, they didn't even pay me like a regular salary they pay you according to how many Crews you get, so it was commission. So it was. Then I had to dress up in a tie, lift these heavy ass bags, you know, and you know, and they, and, and and they give you like a dollar tip. Lift these heavy ass bags, and if they give you five, they want their dollar back. They want all four dollars, and they give you a dollar. Yeah, it was. And so you know, it was part. Of, it was part of that, but it was just that. This and, and and that's why some companies you find these days why some people are quitting. But I'm just using that as an example. Why some people don't want to work because here they don't pay you they don't pay you worth it nothing. Then they treat you like crap and you might be getting treated like crap from the customer, whatever service industry you in. And then you get treated like crap. So you don't. So you feel like crap, and you just feel pressured. Then you gotta come home and deal with the, a, a landlord, a manager that's trying to find some way to try to you know get under your skin, find tactical ways to try to put you out, kick you out, get evict you out of your apartment for no unjustly reason because you I pay my rent on time. I don't. I didn't violate really violate any major rules I didn't tear up the p department I never you know put holes in the walls or had someone come here and mess up I've, I've seen people do that they have company they mess up the property and, and stuff it cause all kind of havoc criminal activity and everything that 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 was a case of me but it's just like I was just one of these people I was quiet trying to get along with people but they just seem like if you're not one of their favorites, you know, you get a manager who's not one of their fa your favorites. They they find some way because they don't like you or they don't like certain individuals, and they trying to they try to get some individuals out. And I was out there for a certain amount of time, for like almost nine ten years. And I went and it was it. I went through hell, man. I'm telling you. So I know I understand what it's like to mentally go through something and, and I even told a friend of mine God really came through I mean because I he knows I was about ready to, my, I'm about ready to snap you know I was right I was ready ready to snap and here I'm trying to do something it's just like it feels like the world is weighing against you but some but that that would be my solution get away from people and save up some money and get away go out of Get, get away and I got you know if it's but if someone discriminating against you because of your ethnic or they got this this like you know you're my you're my personal slave because you know because I got to get on black people because they are they always lazy and they meant this typical get away don't work around people like that you shouldn't have to go through something like that you, you shouldn't have to go and there's some people that got that mindset no matter what you do, no matter how hard you work, they gotta find something bad about you. Cause they, there's some people that do that, and they have trigger ways, you know, on the job to do that. And this is what happened with, you know, those guys. I was hearing about these black men out there in California, and my heart went out to them because they would they would come to go to work. It was out at some factory. I think it was Tesla, one of the factories out there, and. They would get, um, you know, co-workers call me inward, call me inward, um, putting, you know, putting nooses and all this mental stuff, man. And to the point that they go t tell the company what's going on and they kind of wouldn't do anything. And so they sue and, and it's almost like they went through so much racial discrimination so bad that 
one the one of the guys mentally broke down. He mentally broke down, and I said, "Oh my goodness, this is how this is how it is." And so, as a people, as a black man, I understand what he went through. When you don't, when you don't bother nobody, where you got to work around somebody who's racist as a bigot, and but but if you feel like you you get, you get to that point, that's why I see you you got to separate yourself. And separate yourself, separate from people for a while, is not harming other people. Going or think about going to harm other people. Separate yourself. As simple as that. And uh, take take a break. Go to the park. You can't go nowhere. Go to the park. Maybe t take some time and evaluate. Get get, get a spiritual. You know, my, I, I believe in Yeshua Mashiach, better known. That's where, I, that, that's where my rest is at. You, you, you need him these days. You need him, and that's, that's, that's the best solution. But I would, but don't ever, if anybody would take away from this video, don't ever feel like you get to that point, there's a, uh, excuse yourself. And wait till you mentally to go, and then she will go back and do a, a work at another company, or go back to that company. But if you feel like you can't, don't go back. If they they they, they that hard, don't go back. And God, and pray that God, has something give you something, because God knows how things go on the job. If man, people, man don't listen, the the Most High will listen, and that's what He did with me. He, he, he can sustain for you to make an income and be mentally and be happy. That's that's what someone told me. They said, you only have one you as you. When I would let things get to me, get under my skin, and people offend me or something like that, dog me. You only have one you as you. Don't let, don't let someone's person take your mind and don't let them take your freedom. And don't let the enemy, the, the, the visible enemy that's in them, take your freedom. I mean, this going for anybody, to anybody. But um, this is what I've been through. And this is what I did. I stepped away. And I don't hate nobody. I don't, I, I don't hate nobody. I don't wish nobody no harm. I know what to do. Just separate yourself. You can you can be you can be friendly from a distance and separate yourself. See, that's how some people in this country do it. Now figure out a way. You have to be around people. You don't. You don't. You don't. There's a way. Isolate. There's a way. But keep your sound mind. That's all what I'm saying. And too bad that this man didn't see that. He has so much bitter animosity and anger. You know, I guess I can understand the frustration, but his frustration turned into hate, turned into anger, anger that turned into mur literally murder. That's what it leads to. You don't ever want to let something turn your anger into murder. So that's the moral of that's the moral of what I said. That no one's worth it. Nobody's worth it. And if you get and and, and you, if you need some help, go go get some counseling. You know, go get some counseling. Go talk to somebody. Get it out. Vent. Go vent out. But vent at the right way. Don't vent out to harm somebody. So, yeah, you don't want to end up like that. With this guy. That guy, who, who what he did up there in New York. Don't do that. That's not. That's not the solution. No. But uh. You don't want to end up on the news. Listen in. Dr. Vito, Special Agent in Charge, ATF.
staff. Uh, these are the partners who have been working with us from the first moment of this incident, and we have important information to transmit today. First, I uh, would like to go to the mayor, live from Gracie Mansion. And he says God was, that was originally from Ohio, where I live, it's the state I live in. Went to New York. Wow. My fellow New Yorkers, we got it. We got it. We cannot thank the men and women of the New York City Police Department enough, as well as our federal agents, our state police, our first responders from the 9th and operators to the various men and women from our medical professions. and you guys have a good night and remember um, don't be like Frank James go get some help you feel like you're going to and that would be the message because you don't want to end up taking let rob you up here to the point that it gives you ideas to do what he do leave it leave it where it be and um uh, so my name is James, and I hope you um, really learned something from this video. But yeah, if you ever feel like you get to that point, go talk to somebody. And I'm going to tie this mental health. You know, basically, Frank James in the mental health situation. Alright then, you guys have a good evening, good morning, wherever day you're at. You guys take care. Till next time. 
See you on the next video. Take care.